You're welcome today to our channel that is mongenaftalmedicalsciences.com. As we continue to serve you in clinical chemistry, in biochemistry, and physiology, today we want to introduce lipids, or what sometimes we interchangeably call them fats. So before you start watching this video, you can subscribe or you hit the, the like button so that we can keep updating you whenever we release another video. So let us start on the lipids. So as we know that lipids, or what we normally commonly known, known as fats, lipids are organic substances. They are organic substances. And these organic substances, they are, they are soluble in the organic solvents. Soluble in organic solvents, but insoluble in water. But insoluble in, in water. Or what we call non-polar solvents. You can even call them non polar solvents. So these are lipids, organic substances which are soluble in organic solvents but insoluble in water. And these lipids, they are categorized in two many ways. So I want to start by looking at the classification. How are they classified? And maybe before we begin with the classification, we can give examples of common lipids we eat in our food every day. And the common lipids or fats, the common lipids we have in our diet, in the diet, we commonly have triglycerides. We have triglycerides. Triglycerides. Or you can call them triacyl. Try acyl glycerol. We have cholesterol esters in our food we eat. Cholesterol esters. We have phospholipids. Phospholipids and fatty acids. So these are the common lipids found in the food we eat every day. And how are these lipids classified is what we want to look at, what we call classification of lipids. Classification of lipids. And lipids are classified in two, three ways, whereby we have simple lipids, we have compound lipids and derived lipids. We have simple lipids, we have compound lipids and we have derived derived lipids. And simple lipids, as the name suggests, these they are made up of only lipid molecules. That's why we call them simple lipids. And examples include oils. We have wax, we have fatty acids, we have triglycerides, what we call triacylglycerols. All these are simple lipids. Then under compound, under compound lipids, we have lipids conjugated or combined with other substances. For example, you find a lipid combined with a protein or a lipid combined with a carbohydrate. That is what we call compound lipids. So these are lipids. You find they are lipids combined with other biomolecules. And these biomolecules can, like carbohydrates, proteins, and so on. So the compound lipid, for example, 
if i have examples we have phospholipids phospholipids we have lipoproteins we have glycolipids we have glycolipids whereby phospholipid you find it is a combination is a combination of a, of a lipid and the phosphate group and the phosphate then the lipoprotein is a combination of a lipid and a protein then the glycolipid is, is a combination of glucose plus lipids so these are some of the examples of co compound compound lipids then finally we had simple lipids as number 1 compound lipids as number 2 the number 3 is derived lipids whereby derived lipids as the name suggests that these lipids are derived these ones they are derived or they are go, they are formed from hydrolysis from hydrolysis of either simple or compound from either simple or compound lipids so examples here we can see we can see cholesterol being part of this we can see fat soluble vitamins fat soluble vitamins which we normally call adec vitamin a vitamin d e and k all these are fat so they for the life we have steroid hormones steroid hormones are also derived lipids whereby actually yes steroid hormones eg like like testosterone which i like most like testosterone estrogen all these are steroid hormones we have even bile being derived from lipids so these are some of the examples of derived lipids derived lipids so this one is the only classification of lipids we have whereby we have simple lipids we have compound and derived and we have seen examples under each so as we continue after knowing how lipids are classified we can now look at how these lipids help us in the body what are the functions of lipids in the body so we want to look at functions of lipids in the body functions of lipids in the body why do we need to eat lipids are they important in our body so one of the major function of lipids is that they provide energy they provide energy especially during starvation during starvation when you have taken wrong without eating the only source of energy is lipids so they provide energy and we saw these lipids also like structural lipids structural lipids they help they enable us in a, they form part form part of the cell membrane for example we have glycolipids eg glycolipids glycolipids and the lipoprotein and the phospholipids not lipoproteins phospholipids lipids these ones they form part of the cell membrane even including cholesterol cholesterol glycolipids and phospholipids form part of the cell membrane then another function of lipids we see these lipids we can use them here we said we have steroid hormones so we can use lipids in the synthesis synthesis of steroid hormones 
and we have given example of steroid hormones like testosterone, testosterone hormone, estrogen hormone, progesterone, and so on. All these, all androgens are steroid. We can also use lipids. As we have seen among the derived lipids, we have also fat soluble vitamins. So we can use lipids in the biosynthesis of vitamins, of fat soluble vitamins. So we can also use lipids in biosynthesis or synthesis of fat soluble vitamins. An example, we have vitamins A, D, E, and K. All these are synthesized from the lipids. We have also, the body uses lipids, our body uses lipids in the synthesis of bile in the liver. As, as we know that bile is stored in the gut bladder, so we see also we, we use lipids in the synthesis of bile. Since that is of bile, we need lipids like cholesterol. Then we can also use the lipids because these lipids enable us as body insulators against the heat. So they act as thermal insulators. Thermal insulators against the heat loss. They act as thermal insulators. Thermal insulators against heat loss. These are lipids found under the skin. They help us, they enable us not to lose much heat to the surrounding. Then we can also use lipids, those who studied on, on coordination, in neurons we have cells called myelin sheath, which are part of the lipids. And this myelin sheath, I remember, they were teaching us that they enable salutatory transmission of impulses, or faster transmission of impulses. So these lipids, they, they also enable us in a faster transmission, faster transmission of nerve of nerve impulses, transmission of nerve impulses. And example here, I'm giving my lane sheath because we know that my lane sheath is also derived from lipids, which enable faster. What am I saying is that if I have a neuron here. And this neuron has my lane sheath, and here it has my lane sheath. These ones are only positively charged. They are charged inside the negatively charged, and outside the positively charged, only at the node of run. Of run here. So we see the impulses jumping from one node of run here to another node of run here, which is different from neurons which are animalinated, whereby impulses move at every because it is charged everywhere. So that is how this lipid enable faster transmission of impulses. So this, it is very important to understand the functions of lipids because in exams, medical students are always asked to at least outline five functions of lipids. Or even they can ask you 10. So it is very important to understand it, whereby we have provision of energy, structure, component of the cell, synthesis of steroid hormones, then we have synthesis of fat soluble vitamins, then thermal insulators, and faster transmission of impulses. So these are the functions. After looking at, the, at this, we can also go and talk about fatty acids. Fatty acids. And many students normally mix up fatty acids together with lipids. Yes, we have seen fatty acids are components of lipids. So it is like a subset of lipids. So these fatty acids, for them, it is a long hydrocarbon chain. These guys, these guys they are carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids with long, with 
a long hydrocarbon with a hydrocarbon chain. Let us use the word a long with a hydrocarbon chain. Whereby their general formula is CH3, then CH2, N with a carboxyl group. This is the general formula. This is the general formula of fatty acids. Fatty, general formula of fatty acids. Whereby it is the CH3, then where N, N represents the number of car of carbon. It represents the number of carbon. And for these fatty acids, majority of them, majority of the fatty acids are linear. We know that these fatty acids can be linear or they can be blanched or kinked. We can use the word kinked. But the major ones are linear fatty acids. So we want to see how a linear fatty acid is classy. Fine. Classification of fatty acids. This was classification of lipids, the first one. But this is classification of fatty acids. So classification of fatty acids, classification of fatty acids, these fatty acids are classified into two, whereby we have those with double bond and those without double bond. So they are classified into two, whereby we have saturated fatty acids saturated fatty acids and any saturated fatty acids. Where are the saturated fatty acids? These ones we are saying they lack or they have no double, lack double bond. They lack a double bond in their hydrocarbon chain. In their hydrocarbon chain, they lack a double bond. So the major thing is that the saturated ones in the hydrocarbon chain, they are saturated, fully saturated with no double bond. An example, if I give an example that these saturated fats, they come from animal products. They come from animal products and they are not good for our health. So these ones in summary, I can say they are bad fats. Fats from animal products. Animal products like ghee, like butter, like from the meat we eat, all those ones, anything, any oil from the plant or from the animals has saturated fatty acid. That's why in our diet we should include, we should make sure we eat more of the plants than the animal fat. Because animal fats are not good because they have much of the LDA. And these these uh, saturated fatty acids, they include, they include mystiaic acid, we, we have actually propionic acid, propionic acid, we have myste mysteric acid, mystiaric, mysteric, mysteric, mysteric acid, which the spelling is this. We here we have palmitic acid, but before palmitic we have stearic, stearic acid, then palmitic acid, palmitic acid. Where this one is a three, it is a three carbon hydrocarbon. This one is a fourteen carbon. This one is a sixteen carbon. These are the examples of saturated fatty acids, which we get them from animal products. So that's why we are saying at old age, we should always, as much as possible, reduce on eating fats from animal products. Because they are made up of saturated fats, 
And these saturated fats, they cause much risk of developing atherosclerosis or what we call, which can lead to hypertension. So let us always, as much as possible, reduce on these saturated fats. Then another category, which is number two, is unsaturated. And these unsaturated fats, for them, they have a double bond. They could have, have a double bond. They have double bond in their hydrocarbon chain. They are hydro carbon chain. And they, it might have one, those which have one and they are under unsaturated. They are those with one double bond, they are those with two, they are those with three, and those ones with the four. So they are categorized under the number of bonds which we find in the hydrocarbon chain. So you find they are categorized into mono, mono unsaturated. They can be categorized as di, is mono unsaturated and poly and saturated. These are categories of the unsaturated fatty acids, whereby mono means one. So this monosaturated for them, they have one double bond. Double bond. In their hydrocarbon chain. And these ones which have one double bond, examples include, examples include permitoleic, permitoleic acid, and oleic, and oleic acid. These are examples of unsaturated fats with one double bond. Permitoleic acid is different from permitoleic. Don't say they are the same. This one is permitoleic acid, then this is permitoleic acid with a single double bond in the hydrocarbon chain. Then the polyunsaturated, these ones have more than one have more, more than one, more than one double bond in their hydrocarbon chain. So there are those which can have two, those ones with two double bond, those ones with three and those ones with four double bond. Double bond, whereby those with the two, they are known as, as examples of the one with the two, we have linoleic. Linoleic acid is an example of an saturated fat with the two double bonds. Then the one with the three double bonds, we have linolenic. Linolenic acid. Linolenic. This is linoleic, this is linolenic. Linolenic acid has two double bonds inside the carbon chain. Has three. Then an example of the unsaturated fatty acid, which has four double bonds in its hydrocarbon chain, we have example of arachidonic. Arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid has four double bonds. If in another example of unsaturated fatty acid, with the four double bonds in its hydrocarbon chain, we have ecosapent, it is called ecosa, let me write it here, ecosa pentanoic, ecosa pentanoic acid. So ecosa pentanoic acid and arachidonic acid, for them they have four, they are tetra -oil. they have four double bonds in the hydrocarbon chain. So this one marks the end of the classification of fatty acids, whereby we have saturated and unsaturated. We have said saturated, they are not good to our health, and because they have, they cause a risk of atherosclerosis, and they are from animal products. Then these ones being good, the unsaturated ones are good, they are good as fatty acids, for them they are good, and they are got from plant, plant fats or plant oils. Plant oils like uh, g-nuts, like, like sunflower, 
we have like we have plants like olive oil and even sometimes the liver liver is majorly liver or fish fish also gives us good fats which are of an unsaturated type that's why whenever you have a fatty liver disease and we find you we give you these fats which we find from fish oil so when you take fish it can also help us in providing good fats which are full of hdl so saturated fats are full of hdl then unsaturated are full of hdl which does what we call cholesterol reverse transportation thank you for listening in this video always remember to hit the like button and subscribe to, so that whenever we release a video you are able to be updated thank you so much for listening and we shall continue from another next time